Welcome everybody to Bedbug TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. And in today's episode, I wanted to talk to everybody about uh, my little friend here, which is the Verify Bedbug Detector by FMC. And what this is, is it's an active monitor that releases attractants to bring bedbugs to it and uh, helps in monitoring and verifying if a bedbug problem may exist. And so, in this episode, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about a bunch of different aspects of the monitor. Um, first, we're going to go through the monitor itself and kind of tell you how it works and how it, you know, it's intended to be used. Uh, talk a little bit about how to place it and the things you need to consider when you're placing it. And then go through some unique environments and what you need to think about in those unique environments. So, an apartment, if you're going to set it there, what do you need to think about? In a hotel, in an office or public setting, what do you need to think about? And so there's a lot of different information that we're going to cover. Now, one of the things I want to say up front in this introduction is that this video is intended for pest control professionals. Now, the Verify Bedbug Detector, if you're not a pest control professional, you'll have to contact your local pest control professional to see if they offer the Verify Bedbug Detector and services associated with it. Uh, this monitor at this point is not for sale to the everyday consumer, and so reach out to your local pest control companies and see if they do offer it. Okay, what I want to talk about now are the individual components of the Verified Bed Bug Detector and some of the things you need to think about, about in regards to those components and where you're going to place the monitor. And so, what we have here is the Verify, and what it does is, as I said, it brings bed bugs to it, and there's two areas that the bugs are typically going to go to. And one of which is this pitfall that we have here, and the bugs walk, they fall in, and hopefully they'll get, you know, stuck inside there and you can see them. And there's also this harborage on the backside, and what it is, it's just an area that these bugs are going to most likely enjoy sitting, shall we say, and uh, you're going to look at it, and hopefully the bugs would be just sitting inside it. Now, one thing you need to know about with this um, harborage area is that there's nothing here to keep the bugs in the harborage, and so there could be a bug in here. You may even come and look at this and find spotting in here, but no bug. And it's entirely possible that it came and then walked away, or whatever the case may be, because there's no actual, let's just say, way to trap the bug inside that harborage. Um, the pitfall, for instance, though, if the bugs fall in, they really should not be able to get back out. Now, if you're doing a long-term monitoring program, and these have been in place for several weeks, if not several months, whenever you go back to check them, you may want to pay attention to the amount of dust that's built up inside that pitfall. If there's a lot of dust building up in there, that will provide a way for the bugs to possibly get out of it. Um, and so you may want to wipe it out with a microfiber or anti-scratch cloth every time you do monitor it. And so, or check it, I should say. And so, what the bugs are going to do, as I said, is they're going to come to this, they're going to walk up the sides, and they're going to hopefully go into those two areas. One thing that we have found in our work with Verify is that the monitor itself can become infested. And so, FMC, for instance, is not recommending that you take a monitor, put it inside, let's say, one apartment, and then take that same monitor and transfer it to another apartment. They're really intended to be a long-term monitoring program that stays in the unit that it's set in. If you are going to consider reusing the monitor itself, or, you know, the detector, you want to definitely do something to address the unit before you take it into another environment. And so a portable heating unit, um, you could potentially place this in the portable heater and heat it up inside there. If you do that, you want to make sure you take all the components out of it. Now, I'm not saying I'm recommending that, but that is an option that you can consider. And so, if we open up the actual monitor, and what you'll see if we take the core out of the holster, you can see the two different components of the actual monitor that attract bed bugs. And what we have here, and I'll show you in this, is it's a CO2 booster. Um, and what you're going to do when you get this and get ready to set it is you're going to go ahead and peel this foil off, which I'm not going to do right now, but you're going to go ahead and peel the entire foil off. You're going to close the monitor, or the, the booster pack I should say, and you're going to shake it real well. Um, at least five seconds, if not a little bit longer, 10, 15, whatever you feel comfortable doing. And what that's going to do is it's going to activate this CO2 booster for 24 hours. And so this is now going to release carbon dioxide for 24 hours. When you're done, you're going to go ahead and uh, remove that red tab, and you're going to place it in the core like so. And so you can see this comes out. I'm going to go ahead and just slide it right in there. And then here we have our lure. I've got another example over here, and it's just a small little blue package. 
Um, and what it does is it has foil that seals the top of it. Now, in the box of verifies that comes to the office, you're going to find a lure activation tool. I cannot stress enough that it is extremely important that you use the activation tool to pierce the foil on that lure. Um, it is scientifically designed to create a hole that releases the right amount of lure. And so if you, let's say, take your pocket knife and pierce it or something along those lines, that will then cause this to possibly expire too fast or may not work properly. And so it's very important that you use the lure activation tool to actually pierce the lure and activate it. Once this is activated, this will last for 90 days. And so 24 hours for the carbon dioxide and 90 days for the lure. And those are two things that you need to be thinking about in regards to the plan that you're going to put out and, and what you're going to do for the potential client. And so you pierce it, you go ahead and you place it in here like you can see the one is already in here. Now you're going to take the holster, put the core back in place, and there are small zip ties that you can put in these little notches that will help keep this closed and so that let's say a child's hands cannot open it up and, active, and, and get into all these different activation uh, carbon dioxide and lures. And now, so what you have is you have your active verify. Now the question is where and how are you going to place this? And in regards to how, on the back of the uh, Verify, there is an adhesive patch. And so you can take this piece of wax paper off, and underneath it is a sticky um, pad that you can use to stick it to different surfaces. What I can tell you from us using Verify is that that is very, very sticky. And so if you go ahead and take this wax paper off and place it onto a wall, when you go ahead and try to take that off 90 days later, you may have a difficult time getting it off without damaging the wall. And so you need to keep that in mind when you are setting these. One thing I have done is you can see on this one, peel off small corners of that adhesive. And so just a corner is exposed. And then that way it's not quite as stuck to the wall and it may come off a little bit easier. But that is a concern that you need to take into consideration when you're setting these detectors. Another thing that you can do and what we've had success with in setting these in residential settings is we've actually just gone ahead and stood them up on the floor. Now, FMC is not necessarily recommending the Verify to be used in that manner, um, but we have had success with it. And I want to make that very clear. Uh, by just standing them up underneath the bed and the bugs walk up to it, walk up the sides and go in. And so we have had success with that method and that is the primary way that we're using them. But when we stand them up on the floor, there's really no way to secure somebody, you know, from or, or prevent somebody from picking this up and carrying it away. And so when you do that, you want to put it in an area that isn't readily observable, maybe underneath the middle, in the middle of underneath the bed, where you know, a child's hand can't easily access it. And so those are the kind of the basic things you need to think about in terms of the placement and the monitor itself. Um, in regards to where you're going to set it, um, one thing I didn't mention before is that Verify is relatively new to the market. And so everybody's kind of still trying to figure out exactly what the right recommendation is in regards to how many you need in a given environment. In our preliminary studies, we have been setting two per bed and one per upholstered furniture. And so one behind each couch or chair, and then two underneath each bed on the floor, one at the foot in the middle and one at the head in the middle. And that's how we've been setting them, standing on the floor, and we have detected four to five low-level bed bug infestations using them that way. And so what you really want to be thinking about, though, is a five-foot radius. And what the University of Florida has shown in some preliminary research is that Verify can activate bed bugs from within five feet that it's set. And so wherever you're thinking about placing it, draw a little five-foot radius and that's probably where the monitor is, is pulling bugs from. Now, obviously airflow and other things can affect that. And so it's not a definitive, you know, number. But, you know, if you're looking at a bed and it's a small twin bed, if you put one of these in the middle of a twin bed, it may cover that entire twin bed. As opposed to a large king, you may need one at each end or one at each corner or whatever the case may be. And so that five foot radius is definitely a number to consider when you're uh, placing these, these monitors out in different environments. Now. The last thing I want to cover real quick is what should your plan be in terms of maintenance of this? And that's the one I really don't have any definitive answer for. Um, meaning that, let's say we're in a residential setting and you're a pest control company and you go in and you're setting the monitor. Now remember, the carbon dioxide is going to be activated for 24 hours and the lure for 90 days. 
And so I go in on day one and I activate them and I put it in place wherever I put it in place. When am I coming back to check this? And what am I doing when I check it? It's a good question. And so what we've basically been doing is, let's say after we set it, three to seven days afterwards, we usually come back and check the monitor. Um, see if we had any activity in our preliminary studies. We've been having success within three to four days. And so we set it, come back three to let's say seven days later. We check the different areas, the pitfall, the harborage, see what's going on, take a quick look at the monitor itself. And if we don't see anything, we put it back in place. Now we're not going to refresh the carbon dioxide booster at that point. We're just going to go ahead and let the lure work on its own. Um, and that's just the way we're using it. It's not to say that it's the right way. This is the way we've been using it. And then we would come back at an interval after, let's say either a month, two months, or maybe 90 days after. 90 days later, we come back in, we check it again, and at that point, the lure is going to need to be replaced, and so we may do that. And at that point, we may also do the carbon dioxide booster. Come back a week after that, check it again, and then come back 90 days later again. Now, as I said, there's no one way to do that. You have to, you know, talk with, if, if you're a, a homeowner or a renter, you have to talk with the pest control company and figure out what they're recommending and work with the pest control provider to find out what that right interval is. Or just listen to your pest control provider and see what they're recommending and maybe go with that. Um, you know, whether it's every week, every month, there, there's really no one right answer. Just know that this is going to expire the carbon dioxide booster in 24 hours and the lower within 90 days. And so that's, those are the intervals that you need to be thinking about. Alrighty, what I want to talk about now is placing the verified bed bug detector in different environments and some things you need to think about. And so what we're going to do is we're going to split our environments into two different groups. We're going to talk about offices and different public settings in a little bit. Um, but what we're going to talk about now is places where people sleep on a regular basis. And what we really have are two different settings in that we have your residential settings, such as apartments and houses and whatnot. And then we have hospitality, which as you can see, I'm in a hotel room. That's where we're filming the video from right now. And what we have here is a hotel bed that we flipped up. And so what I would think about doing with the Verify in a setting like this is, is you know, I obviously want to put the detector somewhere close to the bed where obviously bed bugs would typically be found. And what we've had success with in our monitoring programs is placing one or two at, and possibly one at the head and one at the foot of the bed underneath the bed standing up on the floor. Now, in a hotel situation, that may not necessarily be the ideal way to set them because obviously you have this platform and the bugs may not be able to access the monitor itself if it's standing up on the floor readily. And so the way it's being talked about at this point is to possibly put it underneath the headboard with the adhesive sticking it to the wall on top of that box spring and then you put the mattress in place and the mattress would come right up to here. And what that would do is it would almost kind of conceal the monitor, yet put it in an optimal location for bed bugs to possibly access it. The issue is that it is a lot more visible there than if it were sitting up on the floor. In some situations, you actually have a gap between that platform and the wall itself. To me, that may be the most ideal place to put these. It's close enough to the bed where bugs would probably still readily be able to access it and be attracted to it yet it's in an area that isn't easily seen by the person staying in that room. Now, the bottom line with this though, is that it's really going to be a decision that needs to be made by hotel management and the pest control professional. The pest control professional talking about where the best places from a bug's perspective may be, and then the hotel manager talking about what works for them and what they think the people you know, staying in their rooms would be happy or content with. Um, the bottom line is remember to keep that five foot radius in mind. So wherever this is set, it's going to activate bed bugs from about five feet away from it. And so if I took this bed, for instance, and put it right in the middle, and we took that five foot radius, you know, you're probably looking at that radius coming out to here, which obviously would cover that entire bed. And so one may be enough. Again, remember, we don't have all the answers to the exact way to set these at this point. Um, one at the head and one at the foot or one in the middle is probably the way that you want to be thinking about it. Now, in regards to how you would uh, monitor it, you know, again, that's a decision that needs to be made with hotel management. Whether or not you're going to come back, you know, a week after it's set to, to check the uh, monitor and then possibly maybe reactivate the carbon dioxide boosters. Maybe not. 
Um, but remember, the 24 hours for the carbon dioxide booster and 90 days for that lure. And so whatever interval it is, if it's quarterly, you know, biannually, I don't know what's going to work best. That's a decision that needs to be made with hotel management. And so that's kind of a, a hotel overview, um, a little bit different than a typical residential setting, which is what I want to talk about now. And so let's say that this now is an apartment, you know, a, a studio apartment, and you have your bed, you have a, an upholstered chair over here. You know, what are we going to think about in that setting? And so when I look at this bed now, in a typical residential setting, you're not going to have this wooden platform underneath the bed. It may be, a, obviously you have no idea what you're going to find, but it may be a typical metal bed um, with those typical, you know, the, the feet with the, the, the legs. And so you can actually easily access the underside of that bed. You stand it up, and that may be the environment where you stand one at the head and one at the foot, or just one at the head, on the floor, like so, and that way the bugs could access it easily, walk up and fall in either the harborage or the pitfall, or I should say fall in the pitfall, climb into the harborage. Um, again, that is not a way that FMC is necessarily recommending using the monitor at this point, but we have had success using it this way where it's just standing up on the floor. The other thing you could think about is possibly adhering it to the wall, maybe somewhere associated with the bed. Um, you know, if this were somebody's home, let's say, and uh, they wanted you to come back quarterly to check the monitor, maybe they're a frequent business traveler and they want to keep an eye on the bed bug situation, they may actually adhere it right to their wall. Obviously, they own the wall in the house, and so if it takes a little bit of paint or wallboard off when you take it off, that's something that they can repair. And so those are, again, decisions that are either going to need to be made with the property management company or the homeowner itself in regards to where to set it, what's best for all interested parties, and how often to come back and check it. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about, which you could find in either a hospitality or a residential setting, is an upholstered chair. And again, you're going to use your best judgment. Remember the five foot radius? And what typically we're going to do is go ahead and place one of these behind that upholstered chair. If it's a long three seat couch or maybe even a sectional where it's in the shape of like an L or something like that, you may use multiple. Again, you want to be thinking about that five foot radius. And you're probably going to check it on the same intervals that you'd be checking the ones that are associated with the bed. Alrighty, and here we are in an office setting. And you know, when it comes to offices and public environments, what you want to keep in mind is that five foot radius we talked about before, which is that, you know, these uh, verified bed bug detectors will activate bed bugs from about five feet from where the actual monitor is placed. So if we look at this cubicle here and say we're going to monitor for bed bugs right here, you know, you might put it up uh, on the cubicle wall underneath the desk or down on the floor, maybe behind uh, a tower a hard drive monitor or behind a garbage can. And you can actually, as we said before, just set them right on the floor and tuck them away where somebody's not going to kick them over. you got to keep that in mind that somebody's going to be sitting at this desk and it's very easy to knock them over and once they're knocked over they may not be uh, very valuable anymore. And so, again, keep that five foot radius in mind. And so wherever we put this, you know, draw a little five foot radius and if you have a cubicle that falls into that radius, that cubicle is theoretically being monitored. If we slide the camera right just a little bit, you can see there's another cubicle right over here. Now, five feet from here is not going to reach that cubicle. And so that one would also need to have a monitor placed inside of it. And so that's really all you need to keep in mind. A lot of the concepts are the same as a residential environment. Um, and then in terms of how these programs work, you know, you could be replacing the chemical attractant uh, every 90 days. And maybe you monitor for activity every month inside these, replace the chemical attractant every 90 days, and then only put a CO2 booster in, say, when you have a, a complaint or activity uh, possibly present. Um, but again, that's not the only way you can do it. There's a lot of different ways that you can do these programs. Alrighty, everybody. Well, that's the verified bed bug detector by FMC. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of different ways to potentially use this, uh, this monitor detector. Um, you know, there's no one right way to recommend this. We're probably going to be updating this video periodically because we're going to be learning new things about this at all times. You know, you just want to keep in mind that 24 hour carbon dioxide booster, um, 90 day lure, uh, that you know, the two areas where the bugs are going to get trapped, um, that the unit itself could become infested and so you really want to leave it in one unit and leave it in that unit and if you take it out possibly dispose of it properly. And then some of the other things with the unique environments that we talked about. Uh, remember that this is, video is really intended for pest control professionals, there's nothing wrong with everybody watching this video just to learn how to use it and, and what you need to be looking for properly. 
Um, and you need to contact your pest control professional, professional if you're an everyday consumer, a homeowner, a renter, if you're interested in the verified bed bug detector. All right, everybody, jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com. If you have any questions about this or any other device, please feel free to email me, and I will see everybody soon enough.